Try these time-tested organic hacks that encourage vigorous soil microbial growth. Healthy soil is not just a growing medium, it is a living ecosystem, a bustling world of invisible organisms that quietly sustain life above ground. Beneath every step we take exists a vast community of bacteria, fungi, protozoa, actinomycetes, and countless other microbes. These tiny helpers recycle nutrients, create soil structure, guard plants against diseases, and even influence how much carbon is stored in the earth. Without them, fertile soil turns lifeless, and crops struggle to grow. While modern agriculture has leaned heavily on synthetic fertilizers and pesticides, this reliance often weakens soil life instead of strengthening it. Traditional organic practices, however, were designed to feed the soil, not just the plant. They work in harmony with the natural cycles of microbial life, ensuring long-term fertility and resilience. For growers seeking healthier crops, stronger soils, and sustainable systems, the path forward begins with rediscovering these time-tested methods. The microbial web beneath our feet. Every teaspoon of healthy soil contains more microbes than there are people on Earth. These microorganisms form what is known as the soil food web, a complex system of interactions that transforms raw organic matter into plant-available nutrients. Bacteria and fungi break down plant residues, protozoa feed on bacteria, and earthworms tunnel through the soil while spreading microbes in their casts. Together, they stabilize soil structure, create pores for air and water, and release nutrients in sync with plant demand. When soil is disturbed by repeated tillage or starved of organic matter, this delicate web begins to collapse. Beneficial microbes die off, pathogens take their place, and soil fertility dwindles. Traditional organic practices, on the other hand, are designed to feed these invisible helpers. By giving microbes the food, habitat, and conditions they need, we empower them to keep our crops strong and soils fertile. Compost, a feast for soil life. One of the oldest and most reliable ways to nourish soil microbes is through composting. Compost provides a rich mix of carbon, nitrogen, and living microbial inoculants. Traditional compost piles were made from layers of kitchen scraps, farmyard manure, crop residues, and green matter. Over time, microbial communities break this material down into humus, the dark and crumbly substance that signals healthy soil. When applied to the field, compost not only supplies nutrients, but also delivers billions of beneficial microorganisms directly into the soil ecosystem. These microbes continue breaking down organic matter, suppressing soil-borne diseases, and building long-lasting soil fertility. Vermicomposting, which uses earthworms, adds yet another layer of microbial richness, as worm casts are known to contain higher populations of beneficial bacteria and fungi. To prepare compost tea, farmers have long brewed water with compost to create a microbial-rich solution for direct application. A typical recipe involves soaking 1 kilogram of mature compost in 20 liters of clean water, stirring occasionally, and leaving the mixture to steep for 24 to 48 hours. This brew can be used undiluted around the base of plants or sprayed on leaves, providing a microbial shield that improves plant resilience and growth. Manure, traditional microbial inoculant. Animal manure, when properly aged, has been another cornerstone of traditional farming. Well-rotted cow dung or goat manure enriches the soil not only with nutrients but also with living microbes that colonize plant roots and rhizospheres, Unlike synthetic fertilizers, which can kill or bypass microbes, organic manures create a thriving microbial environment. Fresh manure must always be composted before application to avoid burning plants and to stabilize nutrients. Once matured, it can be spread evenly across the field or worked lightly into the soil surface. Manure applications encourage soil bacteria that specialize in decomposing cellulose and lignin, unlocking nutrients from plant residues that would otherwise remain unavailable. A diluted solution of manure is also a powerful microbial booster. Traditional farmers often prepare a liquid manure extract by mixing 1 kilogram of aged manure with 10 liters of water, stirring well, and allowing it to ferment for 5 to 7 days. This liquid is then diluted at a ratio of 1 part extract to 5 parts water before applying to crops as a foliar spray or soil drench. 
The result is a natural living fertilizer that invigorates soil microbial activity while feeding plants. Green manures, plants grown specifically to be turned back into the soil, offer an excellent way to feed soil microbes while protecting fields from erosion. Legumes such as cowpea clover or beans partner with nitrogen-fixing bacteria in their root nodules, pulling nitrogen directly from the air and storing it in the soil. When these crops are cut and incorporated into the ground, they become a fresh feast for microbes. The rapid decomposition of green manures fuels microbial metabolism, increasing populations of bacteria and fungi that cycle nutrients. Non-legume cover crops like rye or mustard also play a vital role. Their dense root systems exude sugars and organic acids that act as microbial food, while their above-ground biomass, when returned to the soil, creates organic matter that sustains microbial activity over the long term. Protecting microbial habitats with reduced tillage is, well, pretty important. You know, traditional farming often involved shallow cultivation or digging by hand, and those practices disturb the soil only minimally. But, with modern mechanical plowing, it can actually slice through fungal hyphae, expose microbes to sunlight, and collapse those soil aggregates where bacteria live. Every time the soil is flipped and broken apart, microbial habitats are destroyed, which leads to a decline in beneficial populations. By reducing tillage, growers are able to protect the complex networks that microbes build. Fungal threads get to stretch across soil particles, bacteria thrive in stable aggregates, and earthworms, well, they maintain their burrows. The end result is soil that holds water better, resists erosion, and supports stronger microbial communities. Reduced tillage also helps conserve organic matter, which is the very food that microbes depend on. Crop rotation and plant diversity make a real difference. Healthy microbial communities, honestly, they thrive on diversity. Different plants release different root exudates. These are tiny droplets of sugars, amino acids, and organic compounds secreted by roots. These exudates act as specific invitations to microbial partners. A monoculture, on the other hand, starves the soil of variety, favoring only a narrow group of microbes, while rotations and polycultures invite a wide spectrum of microbial allies. Traditional crop rotation systems ensured that soil was never exhausted by one crop. A cereal crop might be followed by legumes, then root vegetables, and later a cover crop. Each rotation, you know, feeds a different set of microbes, balances the soil food web, and suppresses disease-causing organisms that thrive in repetitive planting. This practice not only improves yields but also makes soils more resilient against pests and stresses. Traditional biofertilizers and microbial boosters have been around for ages. Across different cultures, farmers developed their own microbial solutions long before science could explain them. In South Asia, mixtures of cow dung, cow urine, jaggery, and pulses were fermented into microbial brews that invigorated soils, and in East Asia, farmers used bokashi, a bran inoculated with microorganisms, to ferment food waste and crop residues into living fertilizers. A simple microbial solution that can be prepared right on the farm involves mixing 5 kilograms of fresh cow dung, 5 liters of cow urine, 1 kilogram of jaggery, 2 kilograms of pulse flour, and 10 liters of water. This mixture is kept in a shaded container, stirred daily, and allowed to ferment for 7 days. Once it's ready, 1 liter of this solution can be diluted in 10 liters of water and applied directly to the soil or as a foliar spray. Such preparations inoculate the soil with beneficial microbes, energize microbial activity, and, well, improve plant health naturally. Microbial life and the future of farming well, feeding soil microbes is not just about improving yields, it's really about ensuring the long-term health of our planet. You see, microbes play a critical role in carbon sequestration, locking atmospheric carbon into stable soil organic matter. They also help reduce emissions of nitrous oxide, which is a potent greenhouse gas, especially when soils are managed organically. In this way, traditional practices that nurture microbial life are also climate-smart practices. By blending ancient knowledge with modern understanding, growers today can restore microbial life to depleted soils. Instead of relying on quick chemical fixes, we can harness the invisible helpers beneath our feet to regenerate land, protect food systems, 
and sustain agriculture for generations to come. Soil microbes are the unseen workforce that make farming possible. They build fertility, guard plants, recycle nutrients, and even fight climate change. Traditional organic practices, composting, manure applications, green manures, reduced tillage, crop rotation, and biofertilizers are not outdated relics but vital tools for feeding these invisible helpers. When we invest in microbial life, we invest in the very foundation of healthy crops and thriving farms. If this guide has given you new insight into the living world beneath your fields or garden, just remember that supporting soil life is a journey that grows richer over time. Keep learning, keep experimenting, and most importantly, keep feeding the invisible helpers. For more practical guides on soil and crop health, make sure to subscribe to Soil and Crop Central and share this resource with fellow growers.